Now what is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 2 of the 12 days of aviation or AVRAY. Now in today's video we're going to be visiting different airports and doing rejected takeoffs in the Airbus A320. Now for anyone that doesn't actually know what a rejected takeoff is, to put it into simplistic terms, it is when an aircraft is going to do a takeoff and before it reaches the speed of V1, which is the speed of which it must commit to the takeoff, it encounters an emergency or some sort of fault or error that means it needs to stop immediately. Therefore in that sort of situation, auto brakes and spoilers would be armed, so as soon as the pilot retracts his throttle to idle, the spoilers and auto brakes will be deployed in maximum settings. And and if necessary, reverse thrusters will also be activated. Let's just quickly have a look at this rejected takeoff from a Boeing 747. So here you can see the Boeing 747 land up on the runway, applying thrust to its engines, generating some power so we can accelerate down that beautiful runway. There we go, Toga D10. Full thrust takeoff, let's see what happens. It's a very nice plane, I can't lie. So there she goes, she's going at full thrust, not full speed though because she hasn't hit V1. Now, I don't know what error this, in this aircraft encountered. Don't know. There you go. Spoilers out. Auto brakes are set. Now, let's quickly have a look at another Boeing 747 doing a rejected takeoff. This time, it's a Boeing 747 from China Airlines. And you can see here, this plane's going full for us down the runway. Beautiful, magnificent aircraft. Love the livery as well. But I believe what happened is this pilot actually saw a flock of birds and immediately acted on it. You can see exactly here. Nose down. Auto brakes out. Spoilers are going up. Well, apparently not, but the um, reverse thrusters are definitely out, as you can see. And bam, the aircraft comes to a full stop on the runway. Flock of birds flying around, well done to the pilot. Now today we're going to be in the Microsoft Flight Simulator, flying the Phoenix A320, and we're going to be doing some rejected takeoffs at many different airports, starting off with London Luton. Now, of course, we will be visiting some shorter runways, including Gibraltar Airport. So without wasting any more time, let's just give it a go. Now, of course, to actually do a rejected takeoff, you need to configure this aircraft to know what V1 speed is actually going to be. So, we're going to set up this plane to go from Luton to Luton VFR round flights. And I do actually have a Simbri flight plan imported to this aircraft, so let's just generate that real quickly. As you can see, we're going from Luton to Luton. We're going to just load this aircraft instantly. That then allows us to go into our departure performance. We're going to go EGGW runway 25, sync the load sheet, and sync the live um, weather information. Boom. There we have it. V1 is going to be 131 knots. Now that we have that information put in, we need to prepare this aircraft for a rejected takeoff in an emergency situation. Make sure the seatbelt signs, of course, are on. Make sure the no smoke signs are on. And ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your flight with EasyJet. We're going to reject a takeoff. All right, spoilers armed, auto brakes set, and that should be everything ready to go for our rejected takeoff. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do a takeoff configuration test. Ensure that this aircraft is indeed set up to depart. It is not because I didn't put my flaps out. Flaps one departure, of course. Now, imagine you're on a flight. You're going from, I don't know, Luton to freaking... Uh, just going on a holiday. Enjoy your holiday. And you notice, oh, okay, we're going for a takeoff. We've hit 80 knots. But for some weird reason, I can see a flock of birds in front of me. Now, that's not very safe. We've not hit V1 yet. So let's reject this takeoff. Thrust idle. Spoilers are out. Auto brakes are set. Reverses. We're slowing down. We are slowing down. And there we have it. We've come to a full stop on the runway. Now, if we look at that, the spoilers are out. The auto brakes kicked in. You can see it on the freaking, you can see it on the upper ECAM display. It told us what was going on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the spoilers are on. The auto brakes are set. And let's see what happens if we don't actually reject our takeoff before V1. Okay, 80 knots coming up on V1. V1, reject the takeoff. And we are indeed going to overrun, as you can clearly see here. We have no chance. We have no chance of saving this. We're definitely overrunning here. And literally just like that. See that? We literally rejected the takeoff as soon as we hit V1. You see the big difference that such a little bit of speed can make? Yeah. Um, don't reject the takeoff after V1. In case it wasn't made obvious to you guys already, V1 speeds are determined by the length of the runway and the weight of the aircraft. So these all play major factors in what speed your V1 is. So now, let's visit Heathrow's very, very long runway. But this time we're going to use a very heavy A320. And simulate a flight from here to Svalbard, which is... Um, far away. It's about four hours of flight time, which requires a lot of fuel. So we're talking about over 15,000 kilograms of fuel. Now, this means that we're obviously going to have a much lower V1 speed, but due to the long runway, we might actually be able to increase that to somewhat more than Luton's V1 speed. So just like I said now, ladies and gents, we've got a much heavier aircraft with a longer runway. Our V1 is going to be 153 with the flaps 2 slash UP 0.3. Okay, here we go. Let's keep on the sense line. We're at 40 knots. Looking good so far. We've got a little bit of wind, but that's okay. Right. We're speeding up, coming up to 80 knots. Bam, 80. Okay, so now let's imagine you're about to take off with your A320 with 15,000 kilograms of fuel. V1 is 153. You're living, on a, you're living a cushy life because you're on a long ass runway from Heathrow Airport. Coming up to V1. Oh, fly to birds, 140, 30 knots for V1. Um, yeah, let's 
No, we're rejecting this takeoff because it's birds, okay? Reverses the route, spoilers the route, auto brakes are on maximum settings, and just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to a screeching halt. Got a bit of runway left to left to work with. But what if we actually hit V1 there? Let's try that out. Actually, before we do check it out, I want to see a replay of this because that looked like really entertaining. Yeah, unfortunately, the replay mode in the simulator is a bit broken, so it is going to make it look like our spoilers and reverse thrusters throughout the entire time, but they, they, were, they weren't. Right. So here we are racing down the runway, and then out of nowhere, a flock of birds. We're going to idle our thrust, and then... See, front of the aircraft leans forward. We're now literally at a bit of a slope. And as we slow down even more and come to screeching holes in the, in the middle of the runway, um, yeah, uh, we stopped. We're now going to do a rejected takeoff, but we're going to hit V1 first. And we are rolling down the runway, keeping that nose down. Right, wait for it. V1, idle thrust, reverses. Auto brakes and spoilers are all out. Let's see if we can make it to the end of the runway. Let's see if we can actually stop on the runway without overrunning, because we are quite heavy. Let's not forget that. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We just about make it. Look at how much runway we had left. For a runway of that length, that is very dangerous. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gibraltar Airport. I bring this place up all the time. This is my favorite airport ever since I visited it. I know I keep bringing this up, but I did make a massive video on this airport. It's absolutely an amazing video. You guys should totally check it out. I'll leave the link to it in my description down below. I got robbed by monkeys. We spotted an A400M flying about 300 feet above our heads in the middle of the sea. And a lot more cool stuff went down in there. Check it out for sure. And there we go. We have this aircraft configured to take off. We've got our auto brakes set to max and our spoilers are armed. And without wasting any time, let's go full thrust to take off at Gibraltar Airport. We're going to reject this takeoff before hitting V1. And we're gonna see if we overrun or not. Okay, 80 knots, 100 knots. I feel like we. I feel like even before hitting V1, we won't actually be able to reject this takeoff. Right, thrust idle, reverses the route. And we did actually safely reject that takeoff. We re we safely rejected that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, applying full thrust. This time we're gonna hit V1 and then reject the takeoff. Hang on a second, we didn't actually set our flaps and we're gonna set that now. There we go, we're picking up speed. One, two, one for V1, we're gonna hit it and then we're gonna reject our takeoff. On V1 exactly. We're gonna see if we overrun or if we can actually reject it safely. So here we go, coming up on V1. V1, reject the takeoff. Spoilers are out, auto brakes are set, reverses are extended or deployed. And we are actually gunning it. We're at all. Yeah. That's not acceptable. Seeing as the C is right there. No. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very, very, very much for watching this video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. It's been day two of the 12 days of rate. Leave me some video ideas in the comments so I can use them and I'll even shout you out for those. But anyways, I hope you all learned something new from these rejected takeoffs and hope you enjoyed the rejected takeoffs from today. It's been a very, very, very fun video to record and look at this Wizz Air rejected takeoff. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you all tomorrow for the third day of the 12 Days of Avarate. And thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.